Welcome back to Switch to Linux. It is Monday and it's time for another top five. I'm going to go ahead and invert my list orders now uh, going forward. I'm going to count down from five to one now just to bring things in line with how uh, everyone else seems to do top lists and just, you know, a little bit better consistency with that. So today we're going to be doing my top picks for distros in 2018. Um, and I might do another one of these later in the year, see if things have shifted. Now, what I'm going to do this time is I am not going to consider desktop environments. My list is independent of desktop environments. Um, and I'm going to do another top five probably next week looking at the top five environments. I'm also not going to boot up any of these and look at them because I have done extensive videos on all of these. And so I'm going to go ahead and just card the videos. So I think they'll be up there. Um, when you uh, see this, you can click on that card and get more detail on that individual distro. And these are not necessarily geared towards new Linux users. These are just as I every year, like every few few weeks, I'll swap around this computer here so I get a very good experience on a variety of different uh, environments and setups and builds. And uh, I, what I do then is I just kind of keep rotating those around so I can figure out which were the best distros uh, any given year. Not only this, but on the other computers that I run as well. And we're also considering only the, the specific Linux desktops, so your GNU Linux, um, not including things like the Raspberry Pi builds for very customized things like PFSense, uh, which is a, a BSD, not a Linux, but nevertheless, um, similar platform. So that's kind of what we're going to do and we're going to go ahead and dive on in. Number five pick. I'm going to be looking at Peppermint. So Peppermint, the only reason this is number five being is this is in fact the one of the the distros that is actually installed internal to computers that I have. But the only reason it's number five is uh, because it does only have its own one desktop environment. That is not a problem at all. I'm just including everything where I'm including it. Um, it's also one that I generally would use on, on a lower end computer. However, it can go on any type of computer. You know, in fact, it'd be great on any computer, really. Um, Peppermint is one that I use on my uh, writing computers. And uh, so I have a couple different writing computers. One of those runs Peppermint. I've written and produced entire books on Peppermint with the sole exception of I did move to a more beefier computer for doing all of the, the uh, graphics I needed for the book covers. Um, but I use that for basic research. I use it to uh, write studies. I use it for uh, writing books, a variety of things. And it has never failed me. It is an excellent distro. Uh, and it is one of my top picks. I love the fact that it still has a 32 and a 64-bit download. Uh, you can, if you can't download it, you can actually purchase an authorized USB key. And I love their user friendliness, how to download and install it, an introduction to the desktop, how to customize the desktop, etc. Uh, so there are a lot of uh, a lot of new new functions. The user forms are very good, very cordial uh, people over there, and they have just done an excellent job. Dark theme by default, uh, minimal software installed by default, and a lot of password, uh, a lot of software. And I believe it's based on I think it's based on El Ubuntu. Um, or Debian or both, I forget. Um, but Peppermint is just a totally awesome distro. I love it and you should check out Peppermint, particularly if you have an older or a lower end computer. Peppermint will definitely uh, bring some life back to your computer. Number four is Debian. Um, I love my Debian computers. Um, in fact, I do have one Debian build for this that I'm not planning on getting rid of anytime soon. Um, Debian is definitely not necessarily for the uh, the beginning Linux user because there are certainly a few things in there that are a little harder to configure, a little bit more difficult to get up, up and running. Also, while you get a lot of good security updates right about the time security updates are there, they don't generally update their software until they release a new version, and they are—they uh, do not release their um, their versions 
at, you know, like every six months or every year, like uh, some other distros do, they really release them when they feel they're good and done and tested. And that's what makes Debian a good choice because it is rock solid when it comes out and it pretty much stays rock solid. There is uh, free and non-free bits of code. So if you want to run an exclusive free and open source platform, you have that. If you want to support some more um, uh, versatile software that may not be, or excuse me, more versatile hardware that may not actually be in the repositories or in the free drivers, you have the option to install the non-free as well. It's simply a matter of updating um, one of the scripts and then uh, you can actually do that. That's actually what I've done because this computer here has uh, an, an APU that uh, is not uh, is not well supported in the free, free drivers, so I installed the non-free and get excellent graphics on that. I do have a couple little odds and end problems, but one of the things I love about this is the wide variety of desktop environments available and the fact that on the installer you can choose multiple environments. So if you do want to do some testing across a few different environments, uh, then you actually can very, very easily. It's not like uh, some distros are looked at... Um, I think Reborn OS, you can pick a variety of different desktop environments, but you can only pick one of those. Debian, you can pick any of them. Now, you do run into a few problems if you're attempting to install multiple desktop environments. Um, so that's something, that's why I said, like I said, it's not for the uh, for the, the new Linux user. But for the Linux power user doing a lot of uh, developing and things like that, Debian is just awesome. Um, so uh, their website is a little bit uh, more difficult to... Um, uh, to navigate. You can see that they have a variety of things. I think mine is, uh, I think mine was, maybe it was the July, I forget. Uh, it is Debian 9, um, and then of course I just kind of keep it updated, and uh, you can actually uh, navigate the website um, to figure out what you want. So here's where you can uh, download the live keys to try it out. You can download the installations over here. The best option, what I like to do, is I like to grab the uh, the net installer because basically it's the smallest size. You boot it up with a good internet connection and it's going to download exactly what you need and you can configure uh, your installation as you go. Number three, what list would be complete without Ubuntu? So in a Ubuntu is certainly a lot of people's uh, first time with Linux. It has been my first time with Linux. Um, it has fallen a little out of the favor, mostly with dropping Unity and going back to GNOME right at a time that GNOME desktop is starting to experience a few um, negative viewpoints. And, and I'm kind of with that boat. I don't like the GNOME desktop. Um, I, you know, it, it, there's some good selling points for it for sure, but I'm not a big fan of it. And I think a lot of people were really starting to get used to Unity, and uh, Unity really made Ubuntu its own thing. Without Unity, Ubuntu's, eh, it's just a base to use to build other distros. Um, but what I do like about Ubuntu, it is solid. There is a lot of work that goes into it. It is one of the best Linux distros you can get as far as using a system that works that won't break itself on a regular basis. Um, there are also, you can grab the... Um, you can grab the desktop by uh, just coming down here to downloads and download your desktop, which will get you the current desktop, which is uh, based on the GNOME. You also, though, have Ubuntu flavors as where there are just a ton of different Ubuntu desktop environments available. One of the more popular ones right now that people are talking about is Ubuntu Mate. Uh, this is probably even possibly more popular than the regular Ubuntu anymore. Um, Ubuntu Budgie is is really nice. Uh, there's you know there's a variety of different Ubuntu installs. So it is uh, rock solid. A lot of uh, support base. A lot of options for your desktop environment. Um, and another great thing about Ubuntu is this, particularly if you're trying to learn Linux, there are tons of support forums that already have solutions to the most common problems. So you will be able to fix your system if something does go goofy on this, whereas some of the other distros out there are a little bit harder to, uh, to get those figured out. Number two, Manjaro. Um, Manjaro, some people advise against it for new Linux users. I'm not sure. Um, uh, 
last time I ran Manjaro, I absolutely loved it so much that I kind of regret getting rid of the disc that I had running. I wish, wish I would have actually made a backup of that so I could restore it. Manjaro, my experience with Manjaro was absolutely awesome. Uh, once again, you can grab the official releases. If you come up here to your downloads, you can grab your official releases, which are in the XFCE, KDE, the, the GNOME. Um, but there's also a variety of community releases, which are just as good. Um, I have never seen that one before. That's neat. I might look into that. There's Budgie, uh, Cinnamon, Deepin, i3, LXDE, LXQT, and Mate. So whole lot of variety on the Manjaro. The biggest selling point of Manjaro is the Arch User Repository, AUR. The AUR is so full of so much software Literally, that's what made Manjaro one of the best systems I've ever run. It was very stable for the time I ran it. I ran into very few problems. The problems I was, I did run into, I was able to get resolved um, through uh, through the user forums. Um, but you know, Steam works out of the, out of the, the gate. If you're uh, actually, I, I think you had to uninstall the Steam that was on it. The version I tested, it might be fixed by now. I had to uninstall Steam, get rid of all of the installation folders for it, reinstall it, and it worked perfectly. Um, this amount of software is is absolutely staggering, and it just it worked very well. It was fast, it was lightweight, and I ran the um, I ran Manjaro Budgie when I did my test. And uh, Budgie was just an excellent desktop. In fact, that is the one that's running the computer behind me. Of course, this is Linux Mint running Budgie. Um, but uh, that is, uh, Manjaro is just an, an excellent, uh, excellent, excellent uh, distro to look into. All right, so thanks for watching the video. Uh, before we dive into our number one, just want to let you know that you can actually help support this channel. That's switch to linux.com forward slash support. All right, so our number one distro pick is Linux Mint. Of course, this is the one that I have on all of my production computers, um, which would be this computer doing full web design, or um, this computer's video production and graphic design stuff. Um, I do uh, a little bit of 3D stuff over here as well. My other computer, which is running Linux Mint Cinnamon as a web design developer and general all-purpose computer, I also do video production over there, video recording, uh, graphic design, uh, just a variety of things. Linux Mint is absolutely rock solid. It is um, based on the Ubuntu core and then it is just uh, fixed to the point to where it simply works on just about everything. And uh, I just love the distro for its look, its appearance. There's really nothing about it I would actually change. So, and this is actually why it's one of the tops. Uh, some people in the Linux greater community will think, you know, get on a real Linux distro, not Linux Mint. Well, the reality is it is Linux. It is GNU Linux. It is a very good, uh, very, uh, very sound system. And frankly, I find the security is just as good as any other distro out there. Um, it just happens to work on more hardware. Will it work on absolutely everything? No, it will not. Um, just like everything, you might have to poke and prod to find the specific distros and the specific environments for your particular hardware configuration. But of all the times I've been looking at things, Linux Mint has never failed me and it does not fail the majority of people who use it. There are folks that uh, uh, it doesn't work well on, um, but you know, that's... That's all right. Um, there are a variety of different uh, uh, versions. The Cinnamon, of course, uh, Cinnamon Desktop is built specifically um, for them. They have the Mate Edition, um, and they have, um, let me see all versions here. Uh, those are the versions I was looking for the specific environments. Um, they do have the KDE version, which uh, sadly I think is going away soon. Uh, they do have the XFCE version. Um, so there are a variety of desktop environments. We'll talk about some of those environments next week as I talk about my top five lists of environments. But nevertheless, if you're looking for a great rock solid distro to try the, for uh, an easy, um, easy foray into Linux, uh, Linux Mint might very well be the best place to try out while you're getting your feet wet looking for something else to move on to. Or in my case, I just stay on Linux Mint because I don't have time to be fixing computers every couple of weeks. And uh, I have never had to fix these guys outside of the one time that, you know, 
my whole hard drive crashed, but that was a hard drive issue, not a software issue. So that is my top five lists. So thanks for watching. Let me know what your top distros are down below. Also, let me know, uh, you know, another thing, as I said at the beginning here, if I didn't include your favorite distro, I either ran it and didn't like it, <laughs> or I just didn't run it at all. Let me know what your favorite distros are, and I'll have a look at some of those. And let me know what desktop environments I should look at for next week. I think I know, though, what my picks are. So thanks for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.